Hello everyone, this is Preeti. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share the process that will help you a lot in analyzing data using Excel. Throughout this video, I'm going to use the same data set. Well, we will be looking at the product sales data uh, from the starting till the ending. By the end of the video, you have an awesome report that makes it easy to skim through the data set and that will help you a lot in analyzing and visualizing your data. So let's begin with the agenda of today's video. So we are going to discuss the four important, the four vital steps that has been used in Excel for data analysis. First of all, we will import our data and we will see how we can import data from CSV, TSV or any other format. Then we will convert that text into columns and then we will see some basic or conditional formatting some important shortcut tips that we will be going to use in Excel for data analysis. Next, we will see how we can clean data by removing duplicates or removing uh, spaces, how we can sort our data, how we can check the spellings and how we can replace any uh, blank values. After that, we will see how we can transform or compile data in Excel. Uh, so we are going to use some important mathematics functions, statistical functions, um, some you know important functions in Excel such as VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH. Apart from this, we will also see how we can create a drop-down list in an Excel and how we can transpose our data. And last but not the least, we will see how we can analyze data in Excel using pivot, consolidate, and filter functions. So let's begin with how we can use Excel for data analysis. So the very first step in uh, analyzing the data is to import the data. So you can either just uh, go to your file and simply click it file and open it uh, with Excel if you want it. So here is our data. But uh, the another option if you want to open the file from this like this, you can open it from here. So wherever your file is. So right. So we have opened our CSV file. Now, uh, as you can see here, this file is actually not in correct format. All the columns are just in one column separated with comma. So how we can uh, make it more clear. So for this, uh, what you can do, you just have to go to this data tab and then use text to columns. For in this text to columns, um, you have to select this delimited option because fixed width is used when, uh, you know, the columns that have been aligned in spaces between them. So here you have to check this comma. If it is separated with tab, whichever delimiter has been used in your uh, data set, do, you have to select that. But what I have done a mistake here, I have not selected my whole data set. So let me just first select my whole data set. Now, uh, after selecting my whole data set, now if I apply this, uh, text to column and I have checked comma because it is separated with comma delimiter if it is separated with tab semicolon or any other then I can use that one so you can see here in data preview that it has separated all the columns right so now now you can see that it has separated all the columns so uh, so till now we have discussed how we can import data from other formats such as TSV or maybe CSV for importing data and after importing data how we can convert that text into columns you can convert a text data it may be separated with a space it may be separated with a tab or maybe with comma you can easily uh, separate the text into columns by going uh, to the data tab and then selecting this text to columns so it will simply split a column of text into multiple columns so uh, you can find even the definition here so here is the definition and after that now we will be going to discuss how we can use autofill autofill basically means that it will automatically fill all the numbers uh, according to the past numbers according to the previous numbers sorry so if we if i define autofill in layman terms in excel it is used to predict the numbers uh, according to the past numbers that we have used so it automatically detects the trend uh, and predict the number so here what I am going to do uh, I am just going to uh, insert a new column here you can either insert a new column by clicking here insert uh, 
okay fine so you can see that i have inserted a new column just let me just undo this or you can use a shortcut key control and plus from the keyboard so i will explain all the shortcut keys uh, in the next topic so let me just provide here uh, a heading as serial number and i'll provide one two three so here uh, instead of writing all these numbers manually, what I am going to do, I am using an autofill here. What I will do, I have to select all these three cells and then I have to drag it down. So you can see it has automatically filled all the uh, cells here. So you can drag it till wherever or till whatever number you want. So it will automatically fill all the numbers not only this it can even detect the patterns also so let me just show you uh, i am just going to write an even number here and when after writing even number if i select this and then uh, drag it down so it can see the trend and it can follow it so let me just undo this this is all about autofill you, it can even detect any pattern any trend which is uh, used which has been used in the past and predict the numbers accordingly now let's begin with the formatting as well as some shortcut keys that we are going to use in excel for this uh, first of all i have to select all this data you can see uh, the data is not that much clear actually not uh, these uh, cells are not visible properly you know it is not uh, in a proper way so for this i'm going to select control plus a for selecting all the data after this i can just format it from here auto fit column width so you can also use uh, actually a shortcut key for this as well so i am going to tell you a trick uh, you don't need to actually cram or memorize this shortcut keys you will be good when you keep on practicing the things so now uh, for using the shortcut key uh, so let me just select the whole data set and what i have to do uh, let me just undo this uh, using Control and Z. So after this, I have to just press Alt key. So you can see that uh, I am getting these alphabets in front of this. So now I'll press H, and now here in front of format there is O. So after there is I. So what I have done, I'll do this again. Simply I have pressed Alt, then Alt key, then there is H key, then after this O key, and then I key. So you can see how our data has been formatted in a proper format. Now we will see a couple of basic formatting uh, that we can done in Excel to make our data more clear, to make it more clean. So first of all, what I'm going to do, so I'll uh, actually make this all these headers bold. Fine. So for this, you can either select it from here or what we can do. I have already told you for any shortcut key, you have to just press Alt key. And after pressing Alt key, as bold is present uh, and on our home tab, so H. And you can see for bold, here it is 1. Fine. So all the headers have been converted into bold type. Now you can centralize them. Fine. So you can customize your data. These things are quite common in even Microsoft Word. You can, you know, change the font of your data, change its size. You can make it bold, italic, underline, whatever you want to do. You can even change the color of your text. Okay, if you want to change, you can do that. You can uh, use this for alignment purpose, for indentation purpose. Then there is wrap text and merge center. Now, as you can see, uh, that here the customer ID is not properly visible so I can use wrap text so here it has wrapped all the text in particular cell fine accordingly so you can use this for this purpose uh, let me just undo this and now uh, what is for merge and center uh, now uh, let's say I want to add a row above this ad for the heading purpose so for selecting a whole column we have to press control and space bar key and for correct uh, selecting whole row we have to use shift and space bar so here again i am going to use a shortcut key so i am going to press alt then after alt actually i have to insert a row which is present in home so home 
then i for insert then i have to insert a row so i'll press r so how easy it is so now let's say if i want to provide any heading any heading here let's say uh, i want to give it sales data and here what you can do you can simply select this and you can apply margin center Fine. now let's have a look at data and these are serial number these are just uh, straightforward one two three four so these are fine so next is date column so what's wrong with this date column is it just look weird right so basically excel took your date column as a journal so what we will gonna do we will convert this into date format you can even change the format if you want you can select more number formats and then here selecting date you can select the format in whichever format you want so by default it will select uh, this format fine so this is actually date time this is for date you can select any format you want to select so fine so i have select this format then there is a time column and i think time column is absolutely fine this is hours minutes and seconds then there is a product type so this is fine quantity quantity is fine one two three four quite um, straightforward actually then there comes sales sales basically uh, it is actually counting it as a journal column so sales we can count it in the form of currency so it has automatically added a symbol dollar symbol here you can change if you want if you want to change the currency you can select it from here so you can even uh, you know uh, increase or decrease the decimal numbers you can increase it from here decrease it from here if you want fine so then there comes discount discount is an a proper format then there is a customer id cost then cost actually we have to convert this cost into currency again because it's not in proper format fine uh, then apart from this there is a percentage sign if you want to add like here uh, it is already in percentage form otherwise you can select here if you want to calculate any percentage you can apply a comma for the counting values accounting if you are selecting accounting uh, uh, well rest of the columns these are in proper format so here uh, next we can format table as well if you want so if i have selected the whole you know data and i want to convert it into table and then after converting to table i can uh, select the style for the cell styles for inserting i have already told you i can insert a row or a column or a particular cell can delete even can format it uh, format uh, its height cell height row height column height anything you want to format then there is a conditional formatting conditional formatting basically used to uh, format your column or row or cell based on a particular condition fine so i'll explain about conditional formatting in more detail uh, after introducing if function then it will be more clear here you can make your own rules you can even manage your rules as well so now we have discussed about how we can import data how we can import csv files into excel and how we can convert text into columns after that we have seen an autofill inbuilt uh, function there which is present inside excel and apart from this we have learned couple of basic formatting things and uh, definitely some shortcut tips how we can use shortcut keys in excel now let's move to our second step that is cleaning our data so the first thing we are going to do is removing our duplicate values so let's say uh, i just want to remove all the duplicate values present in customer ids for this i have to go to data and i have to select this remove duplicates that is present just next to text to columns so this uh, little box will just pop up the moment you uh, click at this remove duplicates um, now uh, you can even select whole data or you can select just one column so i have selected this one column i don't want to expand the selection so so just select with current selection then select remove duplicates so here uh, you can even 
select any columns if you have select all your data you can select that particular column from where you want to remove the duplicate values and make sure you have cross check this uh, my data has header so if you have not checked this then it will not consider your headers it will consider header as a, a value fine so after this it will remove all the duplicate values that are present inside your data so now let's just move to the second step next step is sorting the data so now let's just sort the data and make it more clean um, so for sorting we just need to go to this data and from here from this data tab we have just to click this sort but before uh, just clicking this sort i will select all my data using control and a then after this uh, don't forget to select this to check this box my data has header so that the headers can be out of the equation so from here you can select your column with uh, from whichever column you want to sort your data so that it shouldn't be random there should be some consistency with your data so let's say i just want uh, to select this uh, according to the sales so uh, i just want to select the sales from largest to smallest all the values should be sorted according to the sales now you can do okay and it will sort all the data you can see here all the values for this gross sales column is in decreasing order and you can even add another level as well if you want to sort it first level should be by sales then i want to sort it according to the date from the oldest to newest it will sort it accordingly now let's move to one step further and we will going to see how we can remove the spaces from uh, as you can see here in this purchase mode the first cell is quite fine in store there is just one space but here there are a lot of spaces and here also i have done this intentionally so um, for you know for editing it uh, you must be wondering how we can edit it for this you have to use a shortcut key f2 okay the moment you just uh, press f2 so it will uh, make it editable and then uh, if you want to edit it and remove the spaces the one way is to do it manually and uh, it will take a lot of time so the another way to do this um i am going to use a formula here that is trim and you uh, it will uh, suggest you the formula so this is the formula and we are going to click it and here it will mention what you have to pass as an argument so you have to pass a text and i am going to just select this and after closing this and you can see here that it has automatically give you uh, it in a proper format it has trimmed all the spaces that are not required so if you just select this and drag this so it will automatically format all the other cells in this format like here also in store has been uh, all the spaces has been trimmed using a trim function now i am going to uh, tell you another very important trick that we use in cleaning our data so that is spell check so uh, we know that in microsoft word or powerpoint whenever we write a wrong word it just highlight that word but that you know function is not present here in excel so how we can check our data in excel whether we have write it in a wrong way or spelling is right or correct or not so for this you have to just press f7 key okay so the moment you just press f7 it will open a dialog box and it will show you uh, here whichever word it feels like this is wrong fine so let me just show you another way to open this for this you can just go to this review and when you click this spelling it will open the same dialog box here fine now going one step further in cleaning our data we will see how we can use find and replace even uh, before cleaning our data we have to let's say we have to find any particular word and as you can see that my data set is uh, it has almost uh, 2877 rows and there are multiple values so it's quite difficult to find any particular uh, you know value manually so for this what we can do we can just simply uh, use control plus f okay so it will uh, pop up this dialog box and you can write down the value you want to find 
or the alternate way you can just go here home tab and here is find and select and you can use this find and it will open up the same uh, dialog box here now let's say i want to select if there is any furniture value present here so you can just type your value you can even replace it if you want to replace the furniture value with f so you can replace it so it will give you the value so here is the value uh, in the first row uh, or you can do you can uh, alternatively you can find all the values okay so it will give you all the values with the furniture value so it will give you all the values now uh, if you have a look at this email column you can see that these values are not in a proper format these fonts are not proper let's say if i want these fonts in upper fonts in all the uh, you know values all the uh, i means to say that all the words should be in upper format so i can use this upper formula and i can select this and so it will convert all these values in this upper format similarly uh, i can convert it into a lower uh, font as well i can even use a proper font as well proper proper i mean it will capitalize the first alphabet of each word and rest will be in the lower font so you can see here it has converted it in a proper font and by selecting and dragging it it will automatically convert rest of the values in a proper font now you will gonna see how we are going to deal with the main issue we often face while dealing with data that is the missing values like here i have intentionally deleted these values so we know that generally in data there are some blank values there are some missing values and we can't even fill them manually because your data can be huge it can have millions of values so you can't uh, you know replace the values manually so for this what you can do so here you can go here find and select and then go to special so this box will pop up and here you will select this blanks and just click okay now after clicking it it will highlight all the blank values and you have to just type zero uh, or whatever value you want to type and then um, control plus enter so uh, by doing this it will uh, you know fill or it will replace all your missing values with whatever value you want to replace it you can see here in that format only fine so you have to just select control plus enter after writing the value so till now we have seen how we can import the data and after that we have seen how we can clean the data so while cleaning the data we can remove duplicates we can remove spaces using trim function we have seen how we can sort the data apart from that we have also seen how we can replace a value we can find a particular value from a particular cell particular row or from the whole data set and we have seen how we can use proper fonts okay fine so now moving one step further we are going to see how we can transform or how we can compile our data so let's begin with the basic math formulas that we are going to use in excel for analyzing our data now let's say i want to calculate the sales commission for the cost price of each and every purchase and my commission rate is 1.5 percent so it is very uh, simple to do any arithmetic to do any uh, you know arithmetic operation here you just simply have to select that column and then multiply it with your commission rate so here it is and if you simply just drag it uh, it will give you all the sales commission values for rest of the cells um the another way of doing this let me just undo this and the another way i have already provided here a commission rate that is 1.5 so uh, i can instead of uh, providing this value I, what i can do i can just select this and it will give me the same result now if i drag it uh, what happened here why the values rest of the values are zero this is because we are here multiplying this l3 cell with this r4 and we have not provided any values here so how we can solve this issue for this what we can do we can just log this cell okay 
for logging we will use f4 or we have to use a dollar sign here so for make it editable we can just uh, press f2 key and now i can either press f4 f4 will make it uh, logged so here uh, this complete row is logged if you want to log only particular cell then you have to again press f4 now this uh, third cell in this row has been logged here so now if i enter this is the value now if i drag it it will give me all the results one more thing we were actually evaluating a percentage here so i am going to multiply it with 100 oh sorry uh, my bad sorry divide it with 100 and now this is the sales commission now, now let me just drag it so you have seen here how we can perform multiplication, just simple multiplication division on different cells. So similarly, we can perform addition as well as subtraction. Now, uh, taking it to next level, we can uh, perform this, uh, you know, operations. But now we are going to use um, the basic the built-in uh, mass function here. So what we are going to do, we will first check the total cost of all the products then the average sale for all the products, then we will count the number of sales and we will find the minimum and the maximum sale that has been happened. Now to evaluate the total cost, we can use the sum function. Now here it will become blue and you can select it. And after selecting this, you have to provide all the numbers in the range of cell you want to select. And for this, I'm just going to select the first cell and after selecting this you have to select all the cells in this column for this i am going to press Control shift and down arrow it will automatically select all the values till and and then i'm going to press enter so after this so here is the total sum for all the cost values now here i want to check the average sale for this i am going to use average function so it will automatically suggest me all the functions. So I'm going to use average function and it will return the average of all the arguments that I'm going to provide it here. So I'm going to select uh, the average function. Sorry. Uh, now uh, I want to calculate the average value for sales. And for this, I'm going to just select it again, control shift and down key so this is the average value now i want to calculate number of sales present here for this i'm going to use count function count basically will count only numerical values if there are you know strings or text values then you can use count a it will return the number of values in that range now again same thing control shift and down key so here you can see there are 2,876 number of sales are there. And now to calculate the lowest sale, we can select this min function. Again, same way, just select this cross shift and down key and it will give us the uh, lowest value. The minimum value is 0 0.50 and in the same way, we can use max function for evaluating the maximum value. There are certain poor functions, uh, mathematical functions that are present in Excel, such as we can also use round function. So for round function, what basically round function does, it uh, rounds the decimal value, the number of uh, you know values you want after decimal. Like here, uh, let's say if I want only two decimal values after the point, I can just mention here the number of digits I want after the decimal, so it's two. So it will provide me two. If I want only one digit after the decimal, so I can do that as well. Now let's move one step further and we are going to use if function. If is the function which will take you to the another level. It is really very important for analyzing your data. So uh, let's see if I want to, uh, you know, uh, give a warranty for all the products where cost is greater than 70. So 
uh, whichever products cost is greater than 70 it qualifies the warranty plan if it is less than 70 it will not qualify that warranty plan fine now let's give this column a name warranty and we will see whether a, a product qualifies for warranty or not so uh, checking manually one by one and providing yes no it will be quite a hectic task so we can uh, do this using if function so what we can do we can just provide if function if basically it checks the condition if uh, the condition is met then it returns the value if it is true otherwise it will provide the value false so we are going to use logical test here our logical test is we want to check the cost price if it is greater than 70 then it will return yes and if it is not then it will provide us no but here oh my bad i just missed this value now let me just run this yes and we can just drag it down and we can check uh, all the values yes 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 no 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 so here it is we can we can also use and or logics with ifs like here let me uh, give you an example like let's say if we want to check whether the cost price is greater than 70 and discount given is greater than zero only then the person will qualify so here i want to test both the conditions so i'm going to use and function here and will check whether both conditions are true if both are true it will return the value true so here let me just give my first value first condition first logical test condition is it should be greater than 70 and then the next condition is the discount should be greater than zero if it is true then it will return me false uh, yes uh, if it is wrong then it will return me no fine so no because it's less than zero so this is all about if statement you can even use if error i would suggest you guys to explore these functions more now let's move to the next topic now let's see how we can create a drop down list in excel so let's say if i want to instead of entering male and female manually every time i want to create a drop down list from where i can select my option so how i can do that for this I just have to go to data and then I have to select this data validation but before doing this I have to select all the values for which I want to perform the data validation so for selecting all the values you can simply select control shift and drop down button so now I have selected all the values now click this data validation so this dialog box will pop up and from here you can just select whichever value you want so I want a list here between male female if it is a list you can select anything whole number decimal according to your requirement and for a list you have to provide the values so here these are those values i just need to so it depends how many values you want now after this you can just click ok now you will see here here you got the values so you can select accordingly for all these values okay so uh, it is quite easy to create a drop down list in Excel. Now I want to add the age and state for each and every customer right from this table, actually from this sheet, sorry. Here in this sheet, there is a age and state available for each and every customer ID. So I want to get those values here in this sheet. So one thing common in both the table is customer ID. So here I am going to use another very important concept that is VLOOKUP. So let's start with it. For uh, you know getting the values, I am going to use VLOOKUP function. So once I just click it, so what it will do, it will look up for the leftmost values on a table and it will return the value from the same row. Uh, that you have specified in it so let me explain it in easy way what it actually does like I want to see the age and state value for this customer ID so first of all I have to provide the lookup value lookup value is the value you want to look up for in that uh, particular uh, array in a table array so what value you are looking for so here I'm looking for this customer ID h2 
now uh, you have to provide a table array from which you are looking your value so i am looking my value in this customer detail sheet and this is this is the these are the values from where i am looking my value so after that what you can do uh, after this you have to provide which column you are looking for i am looking for our second column uh, for the age column and you have to provide either you want approximate value or yeah exact value so i just want exact match so let me just run this and if i drag this it will uh, automatically if i drag this and it will automatically uh, retrieve all the values from this customer detail sheet well as we have get this age values from this customer detail table using vlookup in the same way we are going to use this vlookup for fetching the state values from this customer detail table for this we are going to use vlookup function and here i have mentioned the lookup value here the lookup value is this customer id after that i have selected this customer detail table and from here I have just selected all the values for the first three columns. Fine. So after that, what I have done uh, here, uh, I just want the state value. So I have set it three third column. I just want and set it as false. False means I want the exact value, not appropriate one. So here it is. Uh, after that, you can just drop it down so it will give you all the values. Now uh, let's say if the value uh, for state is like this. Here is the state value and here is the customer ID. Now I want to get the state value from this customer ID. So what we can do. So instead of using this. Okay. So I am going to select these two columns. And after selecting these two columns i just want to get the first column and set it as false oh but i'm not getting my value what is the reason well there is a little bit problem with v lookup here the problem is the lookup value we are looking here is the customer id so uh, the main problem here is that we look up only evaluates when the lookup value is on the leftmost side like here in this case the lookup value was customer id and it was here on the leftmost side but here it is on not on the left side instead it is on right side so that's the reason it's not working and to fix this issue we can use index match Index match is the most popular tool in Excel for performing more advanced lookups. Uh, this is because index and match both are just incredibly flexible. You can perform horizontal lookups, you can perform vertical lookups, even a two way lookups or left lookups, case sensitive lookups. You can even uh, perform lookups on the multiple criteria. So if you want to improve your Excel skills, I think index and match should be on your list definitely. So now um, I will tell you how we can use index match here. Well, index and match both are different functions. So if we just type index and click tab, so it will uh, give us a basic formula. Index basically wants few things. First thing is an array. Then it wants a row number or a column number. So here what actually array is. An array basically here defines the value we are searching for. Like uh, in uh, let's say in this position I am searching for the state value. So uh, we have to provide the value we are looking for. Now let me just select all these values here. And next we have to row number row number whichever row we want let's say if i want this row number 11 so i can provide it so it will give me this fl definitely this is not the customer id number for this 11th one so uh, ju just to show you guys how the index function works so we have to provide the value we are looking uh, from an old old table which is already existing and the row number value 
so we are going to use index and match function in combination so let me just explain you how match function works so i am going to select a match function and it needs lookup value the value we are searching for we are looking for for an instance here we are looking for this customer id and the lookup array so we are searching for this customer id from this column and then definitely the match type if i want exact match then it will be zero otherwise whatever the value it now let's use this index match function for getting the state value from this uh, from this table so uh, here i just have to use index and after selecting index function i have to give an array and this array basically means the values i am looking for here i am looking for the state values from this old table so i can just select these values and after that i am going to use match function for getting those row values and for this match function so first of all i have just provide the lookup value here the lookup value is this customer id and after that i have to provide the lookup array so here the lookup array is this customer id i want to look up for this customer id from the customer id provided in the uh, that in not in retail actually but in customer detail okay so now after selecting this i have to select an exact match that is zero so sorry my bad i have to use double parenthesis and so here it is okay so here you can see that you can even get the state values even if your customer id i means the lookup value you are looking for that column is not on the leftmost side so you can use index match for even multiple criteria now let's move one step further and let's see how we can change the orientation of our data now uh, let's say if i want to change the serial number for data uh, this whole data i have we can see that it is in horizontal form so now what if i want to convert into a uh, vertical form so i can simply just select it and copy it using control and c so after selecting this what i can do i can open a new sheet and let's say if i want to paste it here in the vertical form so i can go here and go to paste special so this dialog box will pop up and here you have to select this transpose to change the orientation if your data is in vertical form it will be converted into horizontal orientation if it is in horizontal we will can convert it into a vertical orientation now you can see that our data has been converted into an horizontal orientation now let's move one step further and now we are going to learn one of the very intelligent tool that has been used in excel and this is really helpful actually let's say from this email i want to get this first name of each and every email i want to extract the first name so if i am going to type it manually then it will be really a time consuming task but thankfully in excel there is a tool you can use flash fill so how we can use it first of all you just have to type one uh, you know name and it will identify the pattern accordingly now after going to data we just have to uh, tap this flash fill and it will automatically fill all the first name here so now now we are clear with how we can import our data how we can clean our data and now we are clear with how we can transform and compile our data so we have done multiple important functions that are required for data analysis such as vlookup such as index match if function uh, one thing that we are left with here while uh, importing data i'll tell i told you that i'll explain it later is the conditional formatting which is another important thing i don't want to miss it so here for conditional formatting uh, let's just say i want to convert all the purchase mode from stores to in red color 
and from the online uh, i want to convert the online one into green color so here you can just select that column you want to format and go to conditional formatting you can select your color scales or whatever values you want or you can create even your own rules so here i want to create my own rule and i want to format only cells that contain the text value uh, store fine so you can write store here and now you can select the format i want to convert it into italic and i just want the color to be red and now you can preview it here as well so if you apply okay okay so now you can see here that all the values in store values text has been converted to red color now if you want to convert this online one into green you have to go to manage rules and here you can create a new new rule and now i want to convert all the text values containing online into green color fine so i can select the color from here i can preview it okay okay and then okay so now you can see here all these values has been converted into red and green here is a task for you guys actually i have converted all these discount values which are negative one i have converted those discount values into a uh, red text actually so i just want you guys to convert all the positive values into blue color so it's quite easy quite similar i have already told you how we can do that here i have choose actually the text values here these are numeric values so you can do that easily fine so let's move to the next part now before starting analyzing the data i would like to convert this whole data into a table so for this i am going to select my whole data and after selecting it i am going to click here insert tab and will select a table so here this dialog box will pop up and it will uh, give you a range uh, of cells you are going to select for creating your table and you have to check this box that so that it can understand that my table has headers so it can differentiate the headers from rest of the values now you can see that there is a little bit difference in the uh, you can say that formatting so there are alternative cells with different you know coloring background format here is light blue and this is white so this is a table actually and one additional thing you get here is just this design toolbar um, and design toolbar you can change any design you can use this uh, you know uh, row you can use it for header row if you want if you don't want or you can even insert a slicer and this can be used for creating interactive dashboards as well so one interactive feature in this table now you can sort your data easily from here you can even filter it from here let's say if i want to filter my values only values which are you know uh, which have this uh, all these values except tolerating you can do that you can filter it so let me just undo this or you can even if you want to sort your values from a to z you can see here all the values has been changed according to this let me just undo this now even if you want to filter the values you don't want to select all the values you just want to see only antiques so you can do this fine so it is quite easy to filter out your values to you know uh, to even sort your values accordingly it's quite easy with table now moving one step further and starting with pivot table we will be using this table as a backbone so you can select any cell you can click anywhere tab anywhere and then you can just uh, use this insert tab and click here a pivot table so this pop up dialog box will pop up and it will provide you a table range so here it is actually table 1 name uh, this table 1 name has been given by excel you can even change the table name if you want but i am going to use this and i am going to use a new uh, worksheet here and remember just don't check this it should be unchecked and then click okay and and this will create a new sheet and trust me guys pivot and pivot tables are the most important 
topic for data analysis. And for mastering pivot table, you should master the pivot table fields. These are basically the column names uh, which are, you are using in your table. And here you can just simply drag them. If you want, you can just simply check them. Okay, so this all these tables will automatically um, Excel is quite intelligent to automatically you know choose it uh, these either as values. Let's say if I want to select customer ID or even email, so it will automatically automatically detect it either as a row. Uh, what should be the value? So these are for filter purpose. Apart from this, if you see here in this analyze tab, uh, you can either you know, do grouping, uh, you can drill it down. Uh, there, these options are not highlighted here because I have not selected any data for this. So for this, I have to just create a pivot table here. Then these options will be highlighted as well. You can insert a slicer, even a timeline, which we are going to use in a while. So you can even refresh your data. And for this, uh, refresh basically why we use refresh refresh is basically used to update the pivot table based on the changes made within a defined data source range but uh, let's say uh, if you have any changes outside of the data source range then you can change it from here so when you click it you can even change the range from here so right now I don't need it so these are basically both are used to update your pivot table so based on the condition next there is a clear select and move pivot table clear can be used in two ways either you can clear all or you can clear only filters so till now i have not applied any pivot table i have not used any rows and columns so that's why these are not visible so next you can select entire pivot table or values labels I think entire pivot table is the most useful option here. You can even move your uh, pivot table to reallocate to an existing pivot table uh, to new worksheet or to a new location. Apart from this, you can use pivot charts here also and it can also recommend you some pivot tables like here. You can see that these are the recommended pivot table options here you can choose uh, anyone uh, any option if you want so apart from this um, there are certain other fields so uh, let me just explain you one more thing if this pivot table field is not visible so you can click here and there will be a show field list mine is visible let me just hide this and now here is a show field list so then it will be visible now let's see if I want to check the purchase mode actually so I want uh, to see how much you know uh, gross sales has been made by all the three purchase modes so I can do that okay so in store purchases have total gross sale of 10,512 and you can even uh, change this value if you want to instead of getting the sum if you want to get the average value you can do that as well so these are the average values uh, done by this now let's say if i instead of uh, checking it for the purchase mode i want to check that um, let's go for product type which product type has the highest sale or which has the lowest sale and what about the sale for each product type so here you can see that these are just handmade so let them group them uh, let's just group them all in one single type for this just select all the values and then choose group so for this you have to group it and you can group it and then you can just simply rename it as handmade and after this uh, there is any other option let vintage uh, so let me just select these two as well and let me just group them and let me just rename it as vintage and apart from this I think uh, handmade vintage and let me just do all this like uh, name them as others fine so let me just name all this as uh, holidays and this none as 
others so i am going to rename these as others okay so now we have antiques others and found furniture and handmade and vintage so now even um, after this you can even you know sort your values if you want you can sort it accordingly if you want to sort according to alphabets you can sort it you can even filter it if you want the values only for you know uh, antiques and handmade you can even sort the values of gross sale as well let's say if you want to sort the values you can choose here more options you can choose it manually or you just want to as it in ascending order according to the gross sales you have to select this and then okay now apart from this let's say i want to filter it more uh, how i can filter it i just want to select for a particular state let's say so i want all the values for particular states so i can just select that state or i can select just multiple states as well or i just want to select a single state so i can do that as well fine so i just want all the values for these states so the values are changing now uh, what else we can do actually so what else we can do uh, so we can here even uh, specify a purchase mode as well so for this uh, let me just let me just introduce few analyzing tools in, to make it more attractive actually so if even if i want to add any chart pivot chart i can do that so by default it will suggest you few charts so let me just choose this one only so i am going to choose this chart and here uh, you can see that um, these are your uh, row labels row labels are here so these are the sales values you can even switch uh, these as well and if you want to change your type you can select it here uh, so i like this one so i can select it here and you can edit it if you want chart title you can select if you don't want if you don't want grid lines fine so if you don't want legends you can select it anything from here you want draw labels you want labels here you can select it fine you can even hide these things if you want so apart from this what else uh, we can do so this is the uh, you know uh, gross value sales total sales this is actually sum of total sales according to the product type fine you can even change the value from here if you want to count the average instead of sum you can do that and you will see the changes in, in this chart as well fine so apart from this uh, we can even add a slicer here so in slicer i just want to slice it according to state so i can do that fine so i can choose a multiple states at a time let's say i want to select it for multiple states so you can see the changes here if you want single you can select a single state so what else actually now apart from this uh, i want to add a timeline as well so i want to add a timeline according to the date so i want to select the values between the range uh, let's say i want it between this range so i can select the values for the range for let's say this range so i can do that accordingly so i have selected the values from may to october 2017 and for this range uh, for the state these are the values now let's say i want to check the values for multiple states uh, for may to october 2017 so you can even choose uh, you know a months here you can choose for years you can choose for quarters you can choose for months or even days okay so you can choose it accordingly so uh, in this way you can create an interactive beautiful visualization you can create you know interactive dashboards even in upcoming videos i am going to create beautiful dashboards using pivot pivot tables using vba and macros uh, this is just a, a simple dashboard actually this is just for an example that how you can use pivot in excel so uh, let's move to the next topic that is consolidate 
consolidate in layman terms means merging your data so most analysts merge data in excel and any other spreadsheets program to get better insights here i am using a very simple example to make you understand how we can use uh, consolidate to merge our data from different sheets into one sheet so here these are just three columns uh, one is age id state and name and spreadsheet again there are three columns but here the state is the third column instead of second column and there is id name and state again so let me just create an another sheet and for consolidating it i have to go to data tab and then select this consolidate so this dialog box will pop up now you can select a function you want i just want to count the values you can even select average sum minimum maximum whatever you want so now here you can just go to the uh, you know table you want to select and you can select the range here so after this go here and add it now after this uh, i want to get the data from this sheet so it automatically detects the data and then add now check this top row left column and create links to the data source and click okay so you can see here there are two states in both uh, two um, actually states for aid in both the columns there are two names so it automatically detects the data you can even add the data if it's in numerical form you can find maximum minimum value so in this video we have seen how we can import the data from csv or any other format we have seen how we can clean the data how we can compile it how we can analyze it most importantly we have just created a very simple uh, and interactive dashboard well in the upcoming videos we will create more interactive dashboards using pivot pivot tables using vba and macros i hope that you have learned something new from this video guys if you have learned something new please subscribe my channel for more videos if you have any query any doubt you can write down in the comment section so guys do subscribe like the video stay tuned thank you so much bye bye